What's up and welcome to 17 Non. Today we're making a spicy miso tonkotsu rock. elements that goes into any good bowl of ramen. And these are the broth, the tare, the noodles, the toppings, and the aroma. And when these five elements work together in harmony, you've got a good bowl of ramen. To make up the final bowl, we're going to be making a spicy miso tare and pairing that with a creamy tonkotsu broth. And the overall bowl was spicy, creamy, and packed full of umami. And with all that said, let's make some ramen. Hello again everyone, and welcome. The day before we plan on serving this ramen, we got a few things to do. First, we're going to make up a miso tare. If you're new to making ramen, then the tare is what's going to season the broth. In a small saucepan, add 100 grams of red miso, 50 grams of saikyo miso, which is slightly sweet, 75 grams of white miso, 10 grams of light brown sugar, 1 tablespoon of Korean chili pepper, 1 tablespoon of dobunjang, and 100 ml of sake. I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of miso, and you're probably right. And the reason is that we want the tare to be super intense. Place onto a medium heat and cook out the tare till the aroma of the alcohol goes away from the sake. After around 5 minutes the alcohol is gone and the tare should be ready. Remove from the heat and empty out the tare into a fresh bowl. When cool, store in a refrigerator and allow the tare to develop overnight. Now time to make some chashu. What I got here is a slab of pork belly where the outer skin has been removed. First, we want to go ahead and roll up the pork as tight as possible. Then when rolled, tie one side up with a piece of kitchen string. Next, continue to wrap the string around the pork nice and tightly. Finish with a tight knot at the end and the pork belly is ready to go. Cut off any excess string then give the pork a pat while done. Now time to cook the char shoe. Place the pork into a pot then add 1.5 litres of water. Also add 200 ml of light soy, 100 ml of midden, 2 peeled garlic cloves and 2 to 3 tablespoons of light brown sugar. Place onto a medium heat and braise the pork for around 1.5 hours. During cooking, rotate the pork every 20 to 25 minutes or so. After an hour and a half, the pork should be cooked and be nice and jiggly. Remove the pork from the heat then place into a wire rack to dry. Leave the pork to sit here and drain and we'll come back to this in just a sec. As for the braising liquid, pass this through a fine sieve and we'll come to use this when we make the soy eggs. You can remove some of the fat by placing a piece of kitchen paper over the top and repeat this around 3 or 4 times. Leave the liquid to cool and we'll also come back to this in just a moment. Now to transform the char shoe into something special. Add the char shoe into a preheated oven set at 180 degrees and roast for 20 minutes. Pass the time with a little two step then after 20 minutes the pork should be ready. I'm not gonna lie, the smell of this thing was ridiculously good. And it was pretty tough at this point not to slice off a sneaky piece. But anyways, leave the char shoe to cool then when ready, place into a zip up bag then add around a cup of the braising liquid from earlier. Seal nice and tightly and we'll see you tomorrow for the big day. Now to make the soy eggs, or in Japanese known as ajitama. Add the eggs to a pot of boiling water and we want to cook these for 6.5 minutes exactly. Give the eggs a little swirl and this will help create a centered egg yolk. Then after exactly 6.5 minutes we can go ahead and remove the eggs and add to a bowl of ice cold water. Keep chilled for a minute or two and this will help stop the cooking process. When ready we can go ahead and peel all the eggs and add to the braising liquid saved from earlier. Place a paper towel over the top and this will help keep the eggs nice and submerged. Store these dudes in the fridge and we'll also see you tomorrow. The final thing we need to do today is prepare some dashi. In a small saucepan add 30 grams of kombu, 5 dried shiitake mushrooms and 1.5 litres of cold water. Leave to soak overnight and that's all that's left to do for day 1. The next day is now time to make up the broth. To make a super creamy tonkotsu we're going to need to use chicken feet, pork bones and pork back skin. First let's take out the largest possible part you can get hold of. 
To the part, add 50 grams of pork back skin, 500 grams of mixed pork bones, 250 grams of pork trotters and 100 grams of chicken feet. Submerge the bones in cold water then place onto a high heat. The first step when making tonkotsu is to clean the bones. This part's important as it'll help get rid of some of the funk and also help ensure a nice clear milky white broth. As we continue to boil, notice some scum rises to the top of the broth. You want to keep on removing this until the broth becomes nice and clear. This whole process should take around 20 minutes, then when ready, remove the bones from the heat. Next, pass the bones through a fine sieve. To finish cleaning the bones, you want to wash and scrub to remove any impurities left on. And now that the bones are clean, we can add to a fresh pot then top it with water. And as for how much water, I'd probably say around 8 to 12 litres worth. Place the pot back onto a high heat, then place the lid over the top. Now we want to boil the broth for around 4 to 5 hours. We will come back to you later and it's time to move on to the rest of the dish. Now back to the dashi that we soaked the night before. At this point, we're now ready to finish the dashi. Place onto a medium heat, then bring the temperature up to 60 degrees centigrade. When at 60 degrees, remove the kombu, then bump up the temperature up to 70 degrees centigrade. To finish, add 20 grams of katsubushi, then remove from the heat and allow to steep for around 20 minutes. To finish, pass through a fine sieve and now our dashi is ready. Place to one side and we'll use this to cut through the broth towards the very end. Next, we can move on to making a garlic chili aroma oil. In a small bowl, we want to add 2 tablespoons of Korean chili flakes and 2 teaspoons of water. The reason for adding the water is this will prevent the chili flakes from burning when we come to add the oil. Next, in a saucepan, add 100 ml of cooking oil and half a bulb of garlic. This is a lot of garlic, we want the aroma oil to be nice and fragrant. Place onto a high heat and fry the garlic until nice and golden brown. At this point, we want to fry the garlic until it's just about to burn. Strain the oil into the chili flakes and that's our chili aroma oil done. And now it's about time we check back in on the broth. After around 4 hours of boiling, it's at this point where things start to get a little bit more interesting. The broth has reduced and become slightly milky. A ton of umami has been extracted from the bones and the fat has begun to emulsify itself. And it's now at this point where we can go ahead and add the aromatics. First, we need to peel and slice one onion in half, slice around 30 grams of ginger, slice one whole bulb of garlic in half, roughly chop half a napa cabbage, peel one red apple, and finally peel and roughly chop one potato. Before we add the aromatics, top up the broth with around one liter of water. Then when topped up, we can go ahead and add all the prepared aromatics. Give the broth a good mix to prevent anything from sticking to the bottom of the pot. Now keep the heat on high and continue to boil for a further one more hour. It's at this stage of making the broth where we want the aromatics to do their thing and to get the broth much more milkier. Fast forward one more hour and the broth is pretty much there. And it's at this point we can now add the dashi stock. We're going to add this towards the very end to enable maximum umami in the broth. Boil for a final 30 minutes and the broth is finally ready. Remove the broth from the heat then we can pass through a fine sip. This is probably the worst part when making any ramen. But we want to make sure to extract as much of the broth from the bones as possible. When passed, we should be left with a nice milky aromatic broth. To lock in the emulsification, we can hit the broth with an immersion blender. This will emulsify any fat left over and then our broth is ready. Nice and milky and packed full of umami. Place the broth to one side and all that's left is to prepare a few extra toppings. These are two extra simple toppings I like to eat with miso tonkotsu ramen. Add two sweet corns to a pot of boiling water and boil until just cooked. When ready, remove from the water and place onto a wire rack. Use a blowtorch or pan to sear the sweet corn until nicely charred. Slice away the sweet corn kernels and then that's one topping done. Thinking of it, this is one of my favorite toppings and it goes really well with this ramen. Another simple topping is some finely shredded leek. This topping will freshen up the ramen and it also looks kinda cool. Slice into a fine julienne and place this to one side. Finally, take out the chashu and cut into thin slices. You can cut the chashu as thin or thick as you like. However, this really depends on how generous you're being with the chashu. When sliced, reheat with a blowtorch or grill until nicely charred. 
and I have to say the aroma of this char is pretty unbeatable. Keep the char shoe to one side and let's finally talk about noodles. These are homemade alkaline noodles and I'll leave the link on how to make those at the end of the video. Scrunch up whatever noodles you're using to prepare them to cook. Also we can heat up the broth and we're now ready to bring everything together. First let's add the noodles to a pot of boiling water. As these noodles are fresh they'll only take literally a minute. Whilst the noodles are cooking we can start to make up the bowls. Per bowl add one generous tablespoon of the miso tare. To the tare we want to add 350 ml of the hot broth. Mix really well then the soup is ready. By this point the noodles will be ready we want to drain them as much as possible. Add the noodles to the soup. Then we can give the noodles that infamous pull to make a little platform for the toppings to sit on. Next I added some togodashi for an extra little bit of heat. And now it's time to add the toppings. Fan out the char shoe around the side of the bowl. It's at this point I can't hide the fact that I added 4 slices of char shoe. Oh well, I'll leave this one up to you how many slices you add. Next we can add the charred corn. One or half a soy egg. A good drizzle of the chilli aroma oil some finely shredded leek, and finally some sheets of nori on the side. And that's it, our spicy miso tonkotsu ramen is ready. To be honest with you, I had a ton of fun making this bowl of ramen. Ramen does take some time to make, but it's all the attention to details that makes a regular bowl legendary. You can never stop learning when it comes to making ramen. And personally, I can't wait to see how my bowls of ramen taste in around 20 years time. If you made it till this far, then thank you, and have fun making ramen. Don't forget to subscribe! <laughs> Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you want to see more stuff like this in the future and help support the channel, you can simply click on the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. With all that said, see you guys on the next one. Take care and as always, peace.